Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is January 5th, 2020. And if it's not, then you're listening to a rebroadcast of the show and should not be trying to call in. I'm Dr. Five, and as usual, we have the Wombat on the phone with us. Say hello, Wombat. Hey, it's the Wombat. I hope you're having a great hey. new year. Uh, I did. It was great. And we also have plenty of guests today, a buku uh, <laughs> bunch of, <laughs> of guests. Uh, we have Fanny Boudreaux, Sarah Hell Satan, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, and uh, Doubtfire. Right. Did I leave anyone out? No, I think it's a full No, my does it. No, either. Yeah, cool. Nice. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a call-in talk radio show about atheism, free thought, ra- rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville or East Tennessee, then you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll tell you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. And did you know there was a call-in television atheist show here in Knoxville? Has been for almost 10 years now. Yeah. I think did you I'm, know about Wombat? Yeah, it's been around forever. I I know about yeah. it. I've played games since I was a little kid. Mario saving it's the princess, jumping games? on turtles, stars. I know about this. Why are you even bringing it up? Of course I know about oh, it. I games? love, I've loved the series since I was a little kid. Uh, it's a TV show. It's not a game, not a movie, and not a series. <laughs> But anyway, you can uh, find out about the uh, Atheist Call-In TV show right after the mid-show break. We'll give you more details about it. You can also tell, we'll also tell you how to go to YouTube and watch some of their old shows. And in spite of what Steve Martin would have, you think there are an awful lot of Atheist songs out there, and you'll be hearing them right here on this program and generally on this station as I have put them in rotation. Wombat. What's our topic today? Hey, Pseudoscience and yeah. general weirdness? Yeah. Something like that? Hey, it's been yeah. a while since we had a chance to talk about the sciences, and there's been a lot of science in 2019. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Despite yeah. the efforts of many people, we've made some really cool progresses, but also pseudoscience. And I thought it was really cool to see, you know, from the really extravagant things that we figured out using science versus sort of the extravagant, extraordinary claims brought forth by pseudoscience what's a good way to tell the difference between the two and i thought we can bring up some good examples from both sides and talk about them to the show uh through the show today yeah well one of the things i've always heard is like pseudo medicine is an example of pseudoscience yeah. Yeah. you know we get medicines through scientific efforts and if it were uh, if it were actual medicine then it would be called actual medicine it wouldn't be called <laughs> uh, homeopathy or yeah. other names you know like that absolutely um, alternative alternative so medicine yeah. the alternative right. medicine uh-huh. <laughs> they give right. another name I recently got swimmer's ear a while back. Not uh, not a bad case, but just a little itch. And um, I was looking online for like eardrops. And I'm going on Amazon looking for like swimmer ear eardrops. And the the real cure is just three percent hydrogen peroxide. You drop it in, you're good to go. But there's like brand name <laughs> hydrogen peroxide uh, droppers that you can get that have like zero point a zillionth percent of hydrogen peroxide in it because the mm-hmm. healing factors of you know, a very, very small percentage of an actual medicine is enough to uh-huh. infuse the rest yeah, of the homeop- liquid with it. Homeopathy is, uh, says that the, almost like the least, the less you have in it of act, active ingredients, the more effective it is. Yeah. Which is just dumb. And dumb. I'm just like, man, I'm buying water for seven bucks. But no, I don't mm-hmm. think so. I'm just going to get yeah. some hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Homeopathy also says that uh, water has memory. Right. That yeah. it remembers where it's been. So, like, uh, you so know, it's been to the liver of somebody I guess else. It's more the other effect, like the placebo. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is but also I'm remember, it, water goes down an awful lot of toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want that in your body? <laughs> right. Yeah, the memory of a one drop of water would be really hardcore, especially in like New York, where like every drop of water goes through like 40 <clears throat> people's kidneys, right? Before mm-hmm. it even gets to you. Yeah. I have a Uh, really cool pseudoscience product that I want to bring up before we get into like some of the real meat and potatoes. Just a silly thing I saw on the internet. It's basically a twisted piece of metal that you can stick into uh, a pipe that, you know, issues out water in your home. And what the twisted piece of metal does is vortex the water as it comes out of like a (laughs) sink drain or like your shower. And it's called the vortex water revitalizer. And and when Uh I looked at this, I was like, 
why do you need this it costs a lot of money it's like 400 bucks but Jeez. it has some really really great you know um properties to it it can cure arthritis um it mm. improves the taste feel and quality of water it can release gases into your bloodstream and to help you like cure a whole bunch of other diseases it kills bacteria um I'm, the the website has like so many really great <laughs> <laughs> things about it and it's easy to be skeptical but then you look at it and you're just like okay but is there any actual science behind any of this um yeah you're i guess you're adding more energy to the water which might make it necessarily i don't know uh oxidize a little bit better maybe it improves the taste slightly uh, but don't think so no <laughs> <you're> going out <laughs> on the limb well, here. <laughs> but <laughs> one bad one bad when you think about it anything that creates additional friction mm -hmm. to a flow is actually decreasing the energy of the water okay whoa okay. Oh, wow wow so then uh maybe it increases the heat of the water a little bit maybe you get slightly hotter water because it's more energetic by a millionth of a degree there maybe. you go right. hey that's that homeopathy you know that's all you need right there. <laughs> so it's called Schruberger technology and when i went on the website i was really impressed with how many scientific terms they use throughout yeah. all of this they really try to bolster bad science by making it look like good science which i find to be you know it irks me a little bit when i see stuff like that yeah though i would say this maybe we should sorry no oh, go for it go maybe on. we should Maybe we should counter argue their their studies with the same methodology, saying like if that is true, that super diluted substance and chemicals in the water can affect you, we should use the analogy to say like, look, in the ocean, like mm -hmm. in a cup of water, there are more molecules of water than cups of water in the ocean. So mm -hmm. when you're drinking a cup of water, you actually consuming because of this cycle of water, you're actually consuming water that have gone through very smart people through, yeah. you know, like through <laughs> very smart people. You should actually get some cellular memory out of, uh, I don't know, Einstein and even other people, you know, like scientists yeah, and other stuff. Through the so power like, of suggestion, that would probably, they would probably say, oh, that's why I remember um, <laughs> Napoleon, you know, talking to Napoleon. Yeah, the and they have people that will go on TV and say yeah. that. You know. Yeah, it's going to be a good <laughs> argument for their claim. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I will just say this. If you're going to drink something or consume anything, put it in your body, whether it's medicine, homeopathy or just the tap water in your in your home. Make sure you yeah. know what's what's going in it and try to put some effort into like investigating the science behind it, because it, just because it comes in a bottle or is sold by a company may not necessarily mean that it's good for you or worth your time. Yeah, well, it could be educational. Uh, well, it's interesting. <laughs> It reminds me of a cartoon where uh, a guy walks up to a vending machine and it says, are you gullible? Yeah. And put in a dollar, you know, to find out. And, uh, you know, so you're, you're spending $400 to find out that you're gullible. Uh, yeah. You know? Well, there you go. I was Hopefully going to say out. that uh, here in, up in, or in British Columbia, anyway, a bottled water doesn't go through the sort of testing that's required for tap water. Yeah, <laughs> that is absolutely Sell water, true. water, all the shelf. Yeah. Wow. It's absolutely thought true. of that. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the documentary to explain where bottled water comes from, or at least right. like the 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 political or the any sort of body of government with regard to here's a bottle of water in a store, where to come from? Mm -hmm. right. Because your tap right. water is very regulated to the point where it's like mm -hmm. we need to know exactly right. the parts per million of all the organic right. components. We're looking at you, Nestle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like where is that water coming from? And how what's the difference right. between your osmotic process versus your purification process versus your distillation process? Is it all the same uh -huh. thing going in the same bottle? What's the percentage yeah. of what? There's no regulation there. We want to know. Mm -hmm. All right. So Yeah, we're gonna do go not into say that the bottle of water actually this is a, a kind of like a very important subject of nowadays, the climate change, hmm. also is something of the the bottles of water, like the plastic ones that we consume, they actually use more than a bottle of water to be produced. Wow. wow. Yeah, you guys have heard of this? No. Yeah. No. When no. we talk about how the plastic bottles are bad for the environment, hmm. to produce those uh, half a liter, 500 milliliter, 500 milliliter bottle of water, we spend a bottle and a half of resource and you know everything so that's why it's bad to use those uh, right those small portions of plastic bottle i didn't know that wow. okay yeah shoot well you know talking about saving the planet i got one other piece of crazy <laughs> yeah. 
I got one other piece of science that I think is actually kind of cool. This is legitimate. This is that. Well, we'll talk about like how we can tell the difference later. But uh, this was a, a, a YouTube post by Bill Nye the Science Guy. He has a YouTube channel called Big Think where he answers questions from people who have like these general questions about science. Um, the question that was presented was, are we actually aliens? Like are humans or life on earth, orig are we the origination of like a, a primordial life, but from a different planet that just somehow got to here. And uh, Bill and I presented the idea that there's, it's not outside the realm of possibility to consider yeah, that. It's called panspermia. Exactly. Yeah. And, hey, why don't you explain it? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, if we have found uh, amino acids floating in space. Exactly. And we, mm -hmm. you know, they come to Earth, and, and they can be the building blocks of, uh, of DNA yep. and, uh, and life itself. Uh, so why not a uh, fully formed uh, DNA, you know, that may have uh, blown into space? Um, from like a, an asteroid hitting another planet that's populated with, you know, with uh, living creatures, um, it's not un it's not unheard of, and and certainly they wouldn't come to Earth and have any kind of uh, real what what's the word I'm talking about mass, so that it would burn up in the atmosphere. It would just float, you know, to the ground and go into the, any water that may be there, or be encased um, in like ice and then complied with the earth and the ice just absorbs a lot of the sure meteors comets all yep, of that stuff exactly. could, could be the delivery systems for something like that or the other another thing is a lot of people may think that our dna was intentionally placed here whoa uh, by another uh, uh alien species like superman so well, you never know. <laughs> it may have that's come. the story of Superman, right? Yeah. They're just like, hey, we got lots like, of yeah, movies on that one. Uh, yeah, but well, we, we do know that fully formed human in, uh, DNA didn't come to Earth that way. It's just like RNA or the very crude first copies of DNA may have been placed here, but we have no reason to believe it was. I mean, it, we have the science to know how it could form, and we know that amino acids can come to the planet. So. I got well, it just begs it begs the question anyway. If it didn't form here and was put here, how did it form at the other place right. it came from? Hey, there's right. a good question. Right, right. It just pushes the answer back another yeah. step <laughs> exactly. because we don't know where it originated. Yeah, it's, it, um, it goes from one I don't know to a hey I really don't. It's know. answering <laughs> yeah, it's answering a mystery with a mystery. It's, right, right. Yeah, it's I mean, just actually, like, it's jumping in an assumption from no evidence and just because right. we don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would be a natural explanation yeah. as opposed to a supernatural explanation, which right. we that's, have never had any examples of. One, that's huge. Right. And two, it's okay to say you don't know. That's an actual answer. It just means, hey, we got to figure out more stuff. That's not, mm -hmm. it's not a affirmative of like a conclusion. It's more of like an indication that more data needs right. to be gotten. And it's not an acknowledgement of defeat. Yeah, exactly. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. say we can't know. It says right. we don't currently know. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what I love about it. That's why, okay, so and I want to hear Boudreaux's thoughts on this, but that's why I think when I hear someone tell me, hey, we could be Martians or <laughs> from yeah. a moon of Europa, compared to a guy who's like, hey, this tap water will kill bacteria when you put this vortex thing in it. I look at the vortex dude, and I'm like, you're crazy. And I look at the guy who's telling me we could be aliens. I'm like, hey, you have a point there. <laughs> why? Do, yeah. Boudreaux, what do you think about that as a standard? Like, what do you think I might be employing to tell the difference between the two uh, claims? Yeah, so interesting. Uh, my first thought when you, you brought this up is, you know, it gets back to your, your confidence level where, you know, believing in the deity, you know, that they created life, um, pretty, pretty low confidence, uh, you know, from my perspective. But, you know, ancient aliens, as I've heard it, or, or having just some DNA floating into the, uh, into the atmosphere. I mean, these are also, I don't know, no real evidence for it, but now my confidence is could be a little bit higher on that. And, you know, again, it's not supernatural, it's natural. So it's, it's more, you know, more believable. But I think, like everyone else was saying, I mean, what, what good are we doing by, you know, just shifting this mystery to another, uh, another position? I mean, uh, Lawrence Krauss had a fantastic book. Um, on uh, uh, the the how something could come from nothing, uh, and talking about you know the, the origin of of you know everything and, and being being plausible and, and you know that right that there is based on science and you know smart people have found evidence for it and I, I mean we can keep looking into it sure but it's it's one of those things where I don't know that we need to make up 
fantastic ideas to explain things that, you know, maybe we just we don't understand. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know is a generally a good, honest answer if that is, in fact, the case. If yep. we don't know something, we shouldn't say we do just to get past the, the question. Yeah. I also like yeah. how... Yeah, and I think oh. back, sorry. I, I also Go like ahead. how the um, the scientific model that's presented by Bill is using things that we already know as to be true to construct the narrative. So, like, we know we Absolutely. have ice in, in space. We know ice is a really good insulator. We know we have amino acid clouds in space. We know things from one planet can sometimes collide into other planets. We know there's parts of moon, there's moon rocks on the Earth because... Well, actually, there's Earth rocks on the moon because it started off as one thing and then split into two. We have mm -hmm. dust from Mars on Earth from, you know, things that had collided off of Mars and landed on Earth. Right. You can buy moon rocks right or Mars rocks right now <laughs> that we have been on Earth for like uh, billions of years. Probably it's, it's just a really cool idea that you can take all these small facts that we do know and use it to construct a likely scenario for, right. that could explain in the case not saying it's confirming but like just saying like if someone said hey it's possible that dna may have come from a different planet other than earth and maybe just came on earth and then continue to evolve mm -hmm. from there that's well, totally it, it establishes plausibility but, yes I, there you go I thank think you the, no i think the point is like it doesn't matter if they came from the space it's still coming from nothing i think the problem that most of people have is to Accept that everything would come from nothing. Hmm. And then for some reason, they think a super power, supernatural, super powerful being that should be more complex than everything could come from nothing to make everything. Right. Right. And uh, the thing on the DNA coming from, <laughs> from space would still come from nothing ultimately. So uh -huh. I don't see any problem. I, I think the probability of the DNA being insurgent, uh, becoming to exist in Earth or outside of Earth and then becoming in the Earth mm. doesn't change much of the spectrum of the beginning. Mm. Right. Yeah, the big the fundamental same. picture or the big <laughs> fundamental questions are still there. It's just a question yeah. of transporting. And we know we, mm -hmm. things can transport. So it's not that crazy to say we could be aliens. Right. <laughs> Isn't right. that cool? Nothing unnatural about the process. <laughs> Nothing unnatural no. about us being Martians. Larry, okay. you want to talk about simulation theory. Uh-huh. Well, it. you know, there's this thing saying that the universe may be a simulation. Mm. And we often think that some incredibly advanced alien programmer somewhere created a simulation and put us in it. Just like Super if Mario. So, we were talking about yeah. we were talking about at the start it, of the show. Like you yeah. said there was this big atheist yeah, Super but, Mario show. And I was but like, that yeah, I know still that. doesn't still doesn't say where we came from. If the universe is a simulation and somebody put us in it, um, that's something else. But it doesn't answer the question about us. Hmm. And if the universe is a simulation and we are part of the simulation, what does that make us? I mean, just are we just pieces of computer program? And yeah. this, if that's true, then we have no free will because we can only do that which we've been programmed to do. My my issue with the simulation theory is that if the universe is fake and it's made up of, you know, fake parts, we have fake evidence to base that off of, which means that the, the things that we're pointing to to say, hey, yeah. this is evidence that this is a simulation is in itself simulated. We don't have a frame yeah. of reference for what something that's not simulated looks like. We don't yeah. have any evidence to show that this is substantial proof that we are mm -hmm. outside of a system. Yeah. And our senses right. are also okay. simulated. And once exactly. again, it begs the question, who made the simulation? Yeah. And what about diseases? Are they actual diseases? Did the computer uh, programmer create them? Sure. Or are they computer viruses that attack the living simulations without the programmer's intention right. or permission? Dread Pirate, you were saying something? Uh, just that it begs the question once again uh, in asking, is this a simulation? It begs the question, who created the simulation? Mm. Yeah. yeah, or the simulator. <laughs> yeah, and is the simulator a simulation of another simulator? Yeah, mm. is right. there a super right. simulation? No, yeah. And yeah. what's a super, super simulation? And then so on and so on. <laughs> I think, yes, turtles I think, all the way down. I think it falls into those unfalsifiable claims yes. because every time you try to bring back like, okay, we understand we have sense that are limited, but we can both 
claim each other's existence and that's how we exist but if they do put inside the simulation we both running into the same program and there is no way to find out that is what tyrone said it's like it's unfalsifiable because there is no way to find even evidence right. against it if you're like being uh -huh. controlled with that there's no real evidence if everything is a simulation so like yeah. you can't point at something that's fake and be like ah it's fake it's like well that's your evidence is fake so like What's mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. real that we can contrast that with? Otherwise, we're stuck with a, I don't know. And, calls, and falls right. back into the burden of proof. Right. It, it, the person that need, that's claiming this needs to bring us evidence that we are inside the simulation and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I also like the yeah. idea, because I don't know, I don't believe it. <laughs> right. so I can also say, hey, I, I'm an, I, I don't believe what you're telling me. Because I don't know if it's true or not, and and yeah, yeah you don't, you have no evidence. And don't have evidence to support it. Right, the time to believe something is when the evidence is presented exactly and, mm -hmm. and exactly. accepted. Though mm -hmm. it is a very sexy theory, I'll tell you that. To think like, hey, nah. somewhere there's like a, a DLC waiting for me that I can just download and learn kung fu in a quick couple of seconds. That'd be great. You know, it's like, oh, Elon Musk isn't necessarily more talented than I am. He just found the code <laughs> faster than I did. <laughs> it can explain it can explain away a lot of like personal drama. But hey, there we go. Um, hey, science is cool. Pseudoscience is cool. But you know what else is cool? Taking breaks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're at the bottom of yeah. the half hour. Uh, mm -hmm. You're listening to 103.9 FM, low power coming out of knoxville tennessee this is digital free thought radio hour we're going to be back right after the break see you in a minute Listening to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on Wozo 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. Feel free to join in on the conversation at 865 333 5937. That's 865 333 5937. And now, back to the show. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today's January 5th, 2020, and uh, we're going to tell you now about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. Hey. There's the A Atheist Society of Knoxville, 
been around for almost 20 years now, uh, 18 years, let's say, has 980 members as of this morning, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. There's also the Rationalists of East Tennessee, and you can find them at rationalists.org. They have been around for more than 20 years, wow. and they meet at the Pellissippi State Campus. ASK, or the Atheist Society of Knoxville, meets at the Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria every Tuesday evening here in Knoxville. So around happy hour, 5.30 or so, if you're in downtown uh, Old City, Knoxville, uh, go by Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria, walk in the door, look to the right, and there we are at the long table having a great time. There's also uh, the Secular Student Alliance, which is programs at UTK and other schools, high school and college, all around the country. So if you're in school, look for the Secular Student Alliance or do a Google search for it and find out where you might be able to meet like-minded folks in your school. Uh, earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Atheist Call-In TV show. Wait, there's well, an Atheist called... Call-In TV show? <laughs> yes, there is. It's been around for almost 10 years now. It's called Free Thought Forum, and you can see it most every Wednesday nights between 6.30 and 7.30 on Comcast Channel 12 or Charter Channel 192. Don't have cable? Don't worry about it. Just go to ctvnox.org, and you can watch it there it's at the same time, 6.30. Uh, you can also go to YouTube and search for three words to find some of their shows there. Search for Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Also, if you're interested in getting involved in the TV show or the radio show, come to an ASK meeting or RET meeting and talk to us about it. Mm. You could be our next co-host or guest. Now, back to the show. Hey, um, we, talk, uh, we talked about Wanda. pseudoscience. We talked about science. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to get into some really cool territories. Hey, Boudreaux, you had some topics for us. I did, and it was uh, topical <laughs> in that um, this morning my, my daughter, who's 11, um, asked uh, if she could go with her friend um, to, to church. Um, we, don't, we don't go to church. Um, Vivian's very open, open about her thoughts on religion and doesn't, doesn't believe. Um, and uh, she has gone a couple times to this, this uh, church where basically they get to play in a bouncy house and they play a game called Gaga, apparently. I think it involves a ball. But she has a hoot, and it's, it's really playtime, you know, it's, but I imagine there's some proselytization going on and some prayer and some Bible talk and, and things, but I, I guess I wanted to explore a little bit with you guys, like, should this bother me? Should I, am I, I mean, should I allow it to, well, I would I would start yeah. off by saying if she's out at, to her friends and everybody knows that she's not really a believer and she's honest about going to church just to have fun, I wouldn't worry about her friends uh, giving her a hard time. But she is going among a bunch of adults, uh, uh, religious adults who may or may not decide that she's possessed with demons or something. You never know what what thoughts are going to come into their mind and what thoughts are going to prompt them to act in the name of their Lord. Who knows? Yeah, I, I have. That's, that's the only problem I'd worry about. I, I have three words: danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's kind of my. You know, my wife and I talk about this, and she's she's atheist too. But um, she doesn't. This doesn't seem to bother her as much as it bothers me. And I probably I'm probably overthinking it. The 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 parents aren't. You know, they're they're religious, but they're they're not fundamental. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't see them as, I don't think they're going to, I'm outed in the neighborhood as, as an atheist. So the whole neighborhood knows, um, right. they, they, they can tell we're not at church on Sunday. That kind of thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> and they're playing volleyball. Um, I, I wonder <laughs> if I can share something, uh, something similar that's going on here. So Gary, yeah. you're telling me about like a superhero show that is at a public school that still has a hidden message for religion in it, like in the background. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, and it relates to Scott, I think, and his concern with his daughter attending religion. Okay. So yeah. he can, he can relate with you, Eric, because he, he sees the same thing happening to him when he, uh, looks at this, you know, superhero display that has a hidden religious message in it. I don't know. My heart is yeah, exactly. Hmm. I, I can definitely. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. What's your wife's perspective on this? Did you you said your wife was a little bit more cool with it. You, have you talked with her? What's her What's her position? Yeah, well, I mean, I think she she knows I I think about this stuff a lot 
a lot more, you know, doing summits and doing this show and, and others. So she actually was like, you know, hey, I will back you 100% on whatever, wherever you want to do. If you want to tell her she can't go or if you, you know, let her go. She's basically saying, you know, you make the call. I don't feel super strong. Mm-hmm. She's, in, she's inclined to just let her go and not make a big deal. I think she is, if it becomes a pattern to where it's like every Sunday, she goes like two, three times in a row, um, we may intervene at that point. But this seems kind of a one-off. Um, I'm a little worried we're just kicking the can down the road. Um, you know, this is, this is the third time. Um, I, I don't know how it comes up that she decides to invite Vivian, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I, I yeah, please, Fanny, I'm curious your thoughts. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, because I, my daughter is not that old, but, uh, I have a kind of a plan to raise her in contact with all the little me's, like, instead of, like, like, because my criticism with religious people is, like, most of religious people are raised believing that their God is true because it's the only God. When they face the reality that there are almost 3,000 gods around the world, it breaks down a little bit. So, I think for your daughter that is already 11, that sees that you don't have faith, and there are people that have, she is a little like you said, you should be feel safe that she's kind of inoculated about that. Maybe, maybe talk to her about this thing on the faith that bothers you because I think it is important in the sense that you can tell her, like, I'm worried about how people are going to behave towards you. So watch up or, you know, or even mention like that you, you, you don't want just her to, to go through any type of that can happen and i actually was not even being pessimistic like larry mentioned the way that they can buy something that her behavior or anything they could oh she's possessed by demons but i can imagine this happening to my daughter in brazil because when when she was born and i told people that are heavily religious in brazil that i would not baptize her they were like Almost like taking her for the baptism because you can't do it. Your daughter's like, no, I can't. Baptism is nothing than a, a, one of religious ritual from one church. And people were like, no, you have to baptize her, arguing with me on the street because I had to baptize her. Or yeah. I don't know what, if she died without baptism, she would go to hell, whatever. I don't know. I, I did not even try to understand their point, but, uh, uh, I don't think pro- prohibiting is a good way. I was, I was a non-believer since I was like, I don't know, six, seven. And I re- was really against the religious indoctrination in the schools. I asked to not participate on religious class when I was 12, but I would still go to the church activities with my friends until I was 15, I think, just because of this social encounter. Sure. So mm. <laughs> there is a lot of nuances and considerations. Yeah. I, so I see but Chris, I think Chris the best wanted to chime to talk in. To her. Yeah, Chris. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I have a relevant story. Growing up as being indoctrinated into a Catholic family, the pressure to send my kids to a Catholic school was very heavy. So when my wife and I started having children, at the time I was still a Catholic, and my, my view was, let's send them to a public school, and then they can influence the kids in the public school. And it turned out to be the complete opposite, where they went to a public school, and all my kids are atheists. <laughs> so it, it can work the other way around as well. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It is true. I what's the what's the most your uh, Vivian's been exposed to religion or like religious people? Like that, has she had so, any exposure? Yeah, so when she was younger, she and, and Vincent uh, he's eight right now. Um, but several years ago, um, when they would stay the night at grandma and grandpa's, uh, my wife's parents, um, they would occasionally go to church on Sundays. And I remember there was even a time where I was like, well, the parents want to watch the kid, but let's take them on Friday and we'll pick them up Saturday <laughs> so that we would avoid the, um, you know, the, the chance uh-huh. that they would go on Sunday. But honestly, um, since in Ty, you men, right? Yep. Uh, summit, yeah. So in the last, you know, several years, five, six years, um, he's been more open about his 
um, his thoughts. And uh, I, I think I think they stopped taking our kids to to church. So they did have a, a spell where they were going, but they were pretty young. Um, I I would my so, I think my point would follow along Fanny's point, where it's like I, we've all. I don't know about everyone actually, I, but I know for myself that I was a Christian because it was the only thing that I knew because I didn't know there were any other options. But once I knew there were other options, like the allure of Christianity started to fade. Like I was where like, oh, I'm on a team. How do I get on this team? <laughs> Let me figure that out. And um, I come from a family where my sister's Muslim and she's Muslim because that's the only thing that she knew. And my mom's a Jehovah's Witness because that's what she subscribed to because her sister what was a twin, her twin, long story. Well, that was the only thing she knew. And so, like, it only came from opening up my boundaries and, and meeting a lot of different people that I'm able to be like, okay, I get that a lot of people have a lot of different convictions. Just because they're religious doesn't mean that they're bad or stupid. Just because someone's an atheist doesn't mean that they're smart. Um, it's it's just a really nice potluck out there. And uh, for the most part, I'm willing to believe once I have good evidence. And once that's the standard, I'm willing to believe it. I'm willing to curb stop atheism once I have a good reason to. But until then, I'm totally fine with where I'm at right now. And and let's go play bouncy house if you want to play. Yeah. <laughs> we can go play Mario. Yeah. Let's go play Mario Kart. Her. What about you loading her up? Is she prepared to maybe talk to other people if people actually try to indoctrinate her yeah. in some subtle way, asking her like, "Oh, why don't you believe? Don't you think there is a creator?" Would she have some answer to that? Would she say like, well, but which creator, for example? Because or, I think that is the best thing to to bounce back no. to her friend. To no, I, I, I think an SE approach would actually be a really great way to turn the tables on it. Does she know like <laughs> yeah. how to have impossible conversations? <laughs> <laughs> actually, some, some of the SE stuff might be re really helpful. She has actually had conversations with friends at school arguments hmm. and such about a religion um we were in kentucky and and, and um, the kids go to a great school but yeah most of the kids go to church sure. so she's actually gotten um bullied a little bit in the past picked on she actually has found an atheist friend that she confides with. wow that's great i i have actually since i heard about some of the bad stuff happening i've, I've, I've told her to like hey you, bringing up religion with your friends is probably not the best thing in the world um, right now. Um, so I think I'm going to better prepare for um, that. But uh, but I was thinking there were some times where uh, she, she would she would discuss religion with her friends and and I did ta talk to her quite a bit about um, Lawrence Krauss's book Something from Nothing and you know I think she has a fairly good understanding of how uh you don't need a creator to explain why we're here um and i think she has a small understanding of infinite regress to where it's like if she, she's she's mentioned before that she's told her friends well if god created all this who created god and then you know and then and then and then and then <coughs> so uh -huh. Could, may i suggest maybe an se approach where it's just like hey i'm willing to believe that if i have something that's reasonable and can we test it no okay maybe i don't know is the best like maybe if i yeah. flip the coin and i can't see the result it could be heads maybe there is a god but until i have a good reason to believe that that's god's problem <laughs> to figure yeah. out how to tell me and i'm willing to say hey I'm, i'll keep an open mind out until then i'm going to pay my bills or do whatever kids do it's been a while since uh -huh. i've been 11 <laughs> homework mm. walk the dog i so, don't know can i put a challenge out there go for it uh, Ty, how about how about you make a video of teaching SE to kids? Yeah, why not? Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> I've actually done yeah. SE with six years olds, six year olds, and they're on point. Really? They know it. Yeah, I had an yeah. interview with a six year old kid named Nolan. He believed that he saw someone die, like like got murdered or something. But I asked, I, we found oh, out it was just from the movie Frozen, and so <laughs> I was like, so it was a character that was in a movie that died he's like yeah i guess it was a fake movie so i was like yeah fake movie and it's like yeah i probably didn't actually see someone die it was just a cartoon and i was like uh, and i'm like the you can you can you can have the se conversation on topics that aren't even about religion just to exercise critical thought because once they realize oh i have these faculties in my mind that help me parse true things from false things that's the makes the world a difference and you would find that 
whether it's pseudoscience or science, religion or realism, whatever you want to call it, uh, we will be able to parse the difference between the two, regardless of your age. Yeah. I hope he never sees a rainbow, a Rambo movie. Ah, <laughs> that was I caused that guy. I caused that guy to die. I caused Actually, that guy to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just kept rewinding and he died over and over and over again. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, Gary, Ty, can I, Fanny, what do you guys think? Can I suggest a book to, to his daughter? Yeah. For him to buy his daughter? It's a book that I have bought myself. It's really nice. Mm. It's it's more for kids, but uh, it is pretty really big. It's a uh, Richard Dawkins, The Magic of Reality. I, I have that book actually. What you guys are nerds? Yeah, um, oh, I've got it too. I, if I'm not mistaken, though, didn't didn't Dawkins recently write a book for even a younger audience? Ooh. Um. Oh, there is one here. Is this the the Magic of Reality again? No, this mm. is the same. Yeah, Magic of Reality came out three or four years ago, I think, right? Oh, and, it's and it, so it, good. Yeah, I bought when I was in Brazil, so yeah. Um, How we know uh, what's really true. Yeah, that is it's a great book. And oh, that's a great title. Hmm. Hey, I'd like, to make, I'd like to make two story recommendations. The first one would be An Emperor's New Clothes, because... Uh -huh. It is low key one of the best stories of atheism that I'd never even realized was about atheism. It's just the idea of two people can come into a town with so much confidence and a false, like they present both the disease and the cure. It's like, hey, you don't look great. This will make you look great. You can't see it, but you're an idiot if you can't see it. So you must see yeah. it, right? It's like, yeah, I can see it then. And people playing on ego and 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 emotional states to to push themselves into a higher, you know state of power in like this town even the king's in on it and it takes the courage of one boy to be like hey that guy's not wearing any clothes for everyone else to be like oh i guess it's okay for me to say that too or or feel yeah. that way as well you know that uh the freedom from religion foundation gives an annual award called emperor has no clothes award to nice the, yeah to the active free thinker of the of the year very good i love it and i think it's yeah. just a good story it it took a while i didn't see i didn't see it for what it was until i was already over the fence but i think it's a really really good story to just put things into reference um True. you might also want to check out and this is going to sound a little silly but atheism for dummies yeah, there's a book series called for dummies the one yeah. on atheism is really yeah it's a great really reference mm -hmm. it's just layman explaining like all these really fancy terms and as well as counter apologetics maybe even raising family on atheism explaining to people what you're about without like triggering them uh recent <laughs> trends in atheism old things that happen philosophy points it's just a really interesting and fun yeah read. uh when i was uh, i was president of the rationalist beast tennessee a couple of years ago and we had the author into knoxville to have uh, to give us a speech at our annual event wait you had the author uh, for atheists yeah. for dummies yeah what? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a great uh, speech, and he, of course, he sold a bunch of books while he was here. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Okay. So, uh, hey, and I would also say this. If you guys have time, um, whether whether you have kids or not, you might want to check out some really cool SE videos. You can find a playlist on se-playlist.com. That's se-playlist.com. What cool. SE is is just a really, really fun way of talking to people. You can think of it as like a Socratic examination or what it's really called the street epistemology. It's a way to talk to people about their, you know, deeply held beliefs without making them feel like they're being challenged or defend, have to defend mm -hmm. a point or it's an right. argument. You're not challenging the beliefs themselves. You're uh, challenging the method that they uh, arrived at those beliefs. Yeah, you're working with them to see if the way they reach their belief is reliable, and you're working right. on that together. And when you do that together and realize that you can't get anywhere, that you reach a dead end, that's more telling them you saying, hey, you're wrong because you, uh -huh. you came out this belief in in a really weird way. Did, it's you, more... did you watch the interview with James Lindsay, Ty? I think I did. Yes. Uh, it's a little bit of what we talked about. They, they meant it's a topic on the book. The unread library effect. Ooh. It's how to expose and how to show people their own biases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's to behave a little bit like the kid on the why or the, you know, you just keep asking how, mm. why, mm. and, and then they have to explain better. And then, and then they realize they don't understand so well about that subject as they do 
and they should not have that much confidence. Mm. So it's really good for street epistemology. You know, I was just thinking about this too. Like you're the the parents of mm. Vivian. I'm not Vivian, but Vivian's friends who are religious are probably thinking the exact same thing, <laughs> Boudreaux, that you are. Where it's like, yeah. oh man, I don't want my kids hanging out with those, you know, <laughs> atheists. Like, where do they get their values from? Where's all this stuff? Like, what I feel like with the ability to do SE well or just the ability to at least try or the willingness to try, you can like reach out to even talking to, you know, going with them to church and just being like, Hey, I know where I'm at. I'm going to have some fun conversations so people will know where I'm at, but also maybe I can try to figure out something from them too. And that way they see a, a nice atheist and maybe I'll might meet some nice Christians. Maybe we'll invite them over for a summit. Like this could be like a, a fun thing where we don't just identify people by what they believe but know them as people that have a lot of colors to them and plus there is one important thing on that thing on on when you talk about uh, maybe we get together and then go to church and then talk about this it is very interesting it is very important and is the only way to actually change people's mind is to go and actually have conversations but also one thing that we have to attach very much on the street epistemology and more even on the uh, like a part more a partnership uh, conversation than a debate is to create the rapport before so it has happened like my husband have like have has friends or colleagues at work that want to get together and they are religious and the first thing they did do is to invite us to go to church so i told him that no thanks because i don't think it would be good for the first encounter we go to their church not because of us more because of them because like we're gonna end up going to pizza place or whatever after and they will not like to hear what we would give back as response to whatever they ask after the mass so i think it's like let's try to maybe first go to a bar seat talk about the things we have in common yeah and then the second third meeting we can go to church and then we can actually even criticize each other's uh, divergences you know because i have had more effect on my friends of long time because we have such a intimacy that i can actually criticize them in some topics and when i actually criticize their feminism or or their religiosity our relationship was strong enough to go through it <laughs> and, and actually you you bring up a good point that's worth mentioning for others if it, it's helpful um i we've lived in this neighborhood eight years and we've made really good relationships with all the other parents the kids all play together really well it's fantastic if I would have come out as an atheist right away, that would have been horrible for this situation. Luckily, I got to know people. We became friends, and, and slowly over time, um, they found out. <laughs> um, I, I told a couple of them, and then it kind of spread. But um, I even got comments from some of our really religious, my my, my neighbor, saying, man, you're, you're really nice for an atheist. Yeah. I got kind of those. But I think... Fortunately, I think there's there's a lot of separation, and you know they go they go to church on Sunday, but the other days of the week, everyone's super cool. We do cookouts on the on the streets. Um, actually, one of my neighbors has come to a few summits, and so it is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm not looking to try to change their minds. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. You are you are basically just trying to be a good billboard for this is what an atheist looks like, not what your pastor yes. tells yeah. you, but like like me. And we yeah. don't bite. We're normal people. And I think, I, again, your your daughter lives in Kentucky. She's gonna see. She's gonna be Christians yeah. no matter what. Probably, right. you, she could probably hang out with them too because she's gonna be in the future. But th- I I won't tell you. I won't. I my my only thing would be like, it may not be as bad, and it might be good for her to start practice engaging now because these are yeah. really good habits and and social skills that she'll need in the future and the last thing you want is for her to be an adult and be like oh what's a christian i have no idea and then some really <laughs> charming guy comes in and is like hey drive my camaro let's go to this baptist place and you're like oh i hate this guy mm-hmm. i think it would be good for you to meet these people that yeah. are the parents of her friends that she goes to church with yeah more even just because you're curious to know how they would behave with her True. not being religious so it would be a good uh way to measure that you 
coming to hang out with them and then knowing that you're a native and see how they are going to behave with you. Yeah. It is it is a good way to find out how they would behave with her. I also like the idea of having your kid be an out eighth. And I won't say this. This is probably maybe taken too far. But I'd say I like the idea of your kid going there with the understanding that her friends know she's an atheist ahead of time. Right? That way, you know, it saves from going through the script. And you can see if they're really interested in hanging out with her or just trying to convert her so that they can have another plus one tithing member. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's the, the first bit, the former. Um, and, and, but I, one of the things I do think we're going to do, and I really appreciate everyone uh, helping with this, and I didn't mean to dominate the, the topic here, but no, this um, great. I will, yeah, I will sit with her tonight, tonight or this afternoon, and we'll talk to her about it, and yeah. just get a better feel of what happened. Um, oh, real quick, Richard Dawkins' Outgrowing God is the book that came out um, recently. That's the new one written for a much younger uh, age. Um, Magic Reality, actually, I was surprised it was 2012 it came out. So, um, But it, it, both of those, I think, are probably good. But this one's for a younger, younger audience. Sorry, I want to make sure I get that. Also, if you're a teenager and you like cursing, you might want to check out the Atheist Experience. There's a lot of naughty, wordy dirties on the show, but it's really, really good (laughs) examinations of rhetoric, and you get to hear actual Christians call in with their best, you know, arguments. And after a while, (laughs) after about 300 episodes, you're like, oh, it's one of those again. Like, I know this pattern. Like, I I, I hear it. I hear it. Yeah, you can tell. I know these responses. That's good. No new arguments. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking of podcasts, we should tell everybody this is available on podcasts. Oh, yeah. Go for it, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Listen Notes, Luminary Podcasts. You name it. uh, Dot com. iHeart dot com. So uh, just do a search for Digital Free Thought. And uh, on your thought. favorite pod program app. Mm-hmm. I'll even put this up on YouTube so uh, we get more people to have eyes on this. Yeah. So just, you know, mm-hmm. look up for your podcast, uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Also, Shoe Pebbler, who's listening in on the show, he's texting me. He says uh, another good um, example of a book that we should check out is called Parenting Beyond Parenting Belief. Parenting Beyond Belief. Yep. Isn't that Dan Barker's book? Hey, maybe. Pretty cool. So, hey, yep. we got a couple of minutes left in the show. How about we do a roundtable closing out? Uh, Fanny, what are some of your closing thoughts for the show today? For this week in general? Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, pretty good show so far. Every time we have <laughs> the movie series are amazing. Cool. Thank you guys very much. And check my my YouTube channel yeah. in the last interviews with uh, Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay. These are huge names. Ah. Don't just throw them out so casually. Yeah. Just like, yeah, you know, I was just talking <clears throat> to some huge people. Yeah, what's the name of the, the channel? Yeah. My channel, Fanny yeah. and Zai. And Fanny yeah. and Zai. Okay. A-N-Z-A-I. Yeah. You guys go get the book. Peter Bogosian, mm-hmm. James Lisbon, yeah. How to Have Impossible Conversations. Yeah. I'm going to throw a, a book club on my Discord channel that I'm going to be reading one paragraph of each chapter per week. And wow. then we can throw in a big salad of the culture war issues and topics, hot topics of the internet. Nice. Okay? Pretty cool. Uh, Dread Pirate. I, what are some of your closing thoughts as you sail away into the seas? <laughs> it's silent, mm-hmm. silent seas. Well, I, I wish I could have said more about past areas. Uh, Go for it. Go. Well, uh, we're actually moving towards being uh, an actual uh, religion. Uh, if you want to find the religion uh, of the that seems to be the people to the kids. Um, <laughs> Can you still hear me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> happy New Year. Okay, so there you go. Like, happy New Year. Hey, hey, Gary, if you if you type out what you're saying, I'll say it for you on the show for sure. And then um, yeah, we'll go. Um, I'm going to set up my studio mic as well. Nice, nice this issue next time. Okay, so okay. Boudreau, so, what's some of your closing thoughts? Well, uh, I would say first, my sympathies go out to um, Fanny uh, and in the story of, of hearing about the. Uh, uh, people that threw Molotov mm-hmm. cocktails at folks for making the movie about gay Jesus wow. on Netflix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that I'm really interested in, but apparently it's really pissing people off in Brazil. Um, so they, 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 they threw Molotov cocktails at the, uh, 
um, creators of this. Uh, I guess it's like a it's a movie that depicts you know that actually Jesus Christ was 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 gay. Yeah. Um, so but that sucks to hear that you know these if religious people. If you want to talk are, about this, contact me. We can we can do yeah. a, a talk about this through on the channel. That would be that would be great. Yeah. But yeah, happy New Year, everyone, and, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad to be part of the ceremony. So. Nice. Ah, oh, that's super sweet. Okay, let's see. Uh, Shoe Pebbler, you're also here, but you you sent me some really, really, really interesting text. Thanks for jumping into the show. Um, thank you for our listeners. I would say my thing that I'm kind of disappointed in is the false advertisement of Taco Bell. And I can tell you the sad story. I love the double decker. Back when Shaquille O'Neal was like still playing basketball, you can buy a double decker for like a dollar. Now they were like seven. They're like three dollars and seventy six cents. I'm like, gas is still like about two dollars. Why is double decker so expensive? Yeah. Turns out they took double deckers off the menu completely. And since like I guess of last year to save costs, because Taco Bell's losing money left and right. But they brought them back for a special weekend where they're now one dollar. But they changed the recipe and it's no oh, longer no. refried beans inside that's that's combining the soft and the hard taco it's cheese it's that gross cheese that they use and i went there saying like hey could you instead of using the gross cheese just use the refried beans it's literally right there you have the ingredients they're like we can't do that i'm like why so <laughs> it makes no sense yeah so yeah. yeah don't false advertise also i would say hey uh when you have a commercial that looks like it's gonna be a delicious taco don't sell me the gross cheese you gotta look inside the taco so that's that's my um that's it's a long-winded way of going back to you gotta look inside the taco you can't just take false pseudoscience and be like yeah I, i'll eat this it's no problem it's like no you gotta look inside that make sure you're getting what you think you're getting right there you go wrap that up in a bow <laughs> that or five. what's your closing thoughts oh well i was just like to say that if, if you like the content of this uh podcast be sure to visit our site at digitalfreethought.com and mm -hmm. click on the blog button if you have any questions you'd like to submit to the show uh send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org yep and finally remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove souls heavens healths are real and until then don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. Been a great show. Thanks, guys, for coming on and appreciate you being here. Great. Thank you. Thank you. See you next yeah. week, guys. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. See you.